concerned. Concerned. Coming Coming of age. age. Say something, Nancy. I'm overwhelmed, Peter. I, I know we haven't known each other that long. Seven years? Seems like nine, but I knew the moment I laid eyes on you. Where did you get the eyes that you laid on me? Cadavers. Oh. But um, I, I, I knew the moment I laid those eyes on you that I wanted to be with you for the rest of my life. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Peter. Am I interrupting? I'm not sure I have ever been more interrupted, and both my parents had ADHD and ate sketchy convenience store diet pills like they were knockoff fruity pebbles. In milk? Yes. Uh, no, buddy, you're not, you're not interrupting. Uh, Peter, get up off of one knee. I'm worried. About the decrease in Brazilian wax viscosity? No. Uh, how few potato chips come in a snack-sized bag? No. Uh, plush toy extinction? I'm worried about becoming a woman. You're a dude? Peter! My body is changing and it scares me. Well, that's all part of growing up. But my feet are turning into hooves. Nancy, you didn't answer me. Will you marry me? Yeah. It's a nasty uh, storm out there. You mind if I put my shoes in the microwave? Slack jaw. Uh... Uh, am I interrupting something? Yes! At least two things. But of course not, Slackjaw. And of course you can put your shoes in the microwave. Much obliged. And how about I draw you a nice bath? Oh, with markers? Come with me. Piggyback me. Or why not? Oh, well, <laughs> she said, why? Doesn't count. I know. Hey, can I see your hooves? Fifty dollars. I'll give you thirty-five. Oh, dear. Oh, holy crap. I know. Weird, right? Hello! Hello! <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Far Out Fiesta, episode 76.1, Knock Off Fruity Pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, Richard Houghton. Please give it up for our amazing cast, Kristen Keith. Hello, everyone. It's really nice to be here. Rob Hutchman. <laughs> I parked outside. And special <laughs> guest star, Cynthia Santiago. Hello! Hey. Hey. Oh, awesome. Out. Let's fiesta! Woohoo! Woohoo! Terrible, Terrible matchmaker. matchmaker! Matchmaker. Tonight on Terrible Matchmaker, I once again try to match up the unmatchable. Hey, that's not very nice! Forgot you were here. Well, I'm your only guest! Perhaps you should try being more memorable. Perhaps you should try blocking my slap! What? Ouch! <gasps> Before we meet our dates, tell us about yourself. Okay, well, my story is very common. I went back to college specifically to join a sorority, and then I was told that I was too old and too joint too old to join one. You I, are old and old. So I, I just I just go to the parties until they ask me to leave, and then. Pathetic. Let's meet your first date. Come on out, Maverick. Oh, my first clue should have been that he calls himself Maverick. <laughs> Hello, Glenna. Hey, what's up, Gene Billy? Whee! Oh, he spins around? I don't just spin around, Gene Billy. Mm, yeah. Oh, right. He also eats frogs. That was <laughs> a tasty one. Whee! Oh, somebody has pretty high standards for being so dull and so... Oh, okay. To his credit, I guess he 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 took no for an answer when after he was doing sp he was done spinning, he had eaten his last frog. And hey, I had more in my fanny pack. Well, uh, and he took no for an answer when he asked if I wanted to make out for six hours. Really? Mm. I'd have done it. Sorry it didn't work out, Maverick. Call me. I'll pencil you in from 2 to 8 a.m. How did you even find him? Analytics. Let's meet your next date, who is probably also too good for you. That's not nice. Welcome, Monterey. Oh, hold on. Mm, gotta stretch. Oh, uh, hey, I thought we were in Dallas. Oh, your name is Monterey, uh, dumbass. Do you mind if I put my heel on your ear to stretch out my hammy? Of course I do. What was your problem with him, Gene Billy? <clears throat> Other than him not easily recalling his own name. Okay, he constantly stretched. He's constantly stretching. Like, constantly. He's never not stretching. Oh, baby, stretching is the best thing you can do to keep the electrolytes Ooh. pumping through your aorta. You're an idiot. Dude, 
You should augment your stretching with a little frog eating. Oh, man, right on. And you should mix up your spinning by adding a little stretching. Right on. Maybe I found a match after all. Go home, Jean Billy. Oh, gladly. Fluck off. Six hours? Three-way makeout? Let me stretch first. And I'll need more frogs. <laughs> Bye. That is clear. I can't imagine a world without kale. Bite your tongue. Ow. You finished your dry kale and you're looking for one more thing that people say is probably healthy. I have. And I am. Okay, thanks. See ya. Wait a minute. Weren't you going to try to sell us something? I was. Thank you for reminding me. Just do your job, talk boy. How about something that has no calories? I fucking hate calories. No carbs. Cards make me want to form a seal over a newborn's mouth and suck the life out of the little crap bucket. <laughs> it's gluten free. Gluten is is oh, gluten is worse than that medieval general known for eating faces off of his enemies with kiwi fruit. And no peanuts. That bullet point doesn't really move the needle. Yeah, you're losing us. It's a bag of clear! I must have it! Uh, how may I purchase it? How about I let my main man Colton answer that question? If you don't know how to answer, you just you can just say I don't know. Yo, yo, yo. I got the top shelf clear fresh from the coast. I got OG clear. Girl Scout clear. Pineapple Express clear. I will hook you up. Gee. How much is it? Ounce of OG run you about 400. Can I get half? I can get you a half for two twenty. Quarter for one fifty. Colton ain't got time for no eights. Cash is only. <laughs> Meet me behind the shell on one eighty three and the store road with your headlights off. Bag of clear. Yo, bro, keep that on the DL. Captain, Captain Goodfellow. Goodfellow. Lost. Lost. Henrietta. Yes. Lupe Lou. Yes. Nelson. Yes? I need you all to be at the lighthouse. Okay, we are. Because I have lost something very near and dear to me. Periodontic health? No. Flatulence control? No. Gold placenta? Like seagull placenta? Yes. No. It's my tin of mustache wax. Dude, I was in the middle of a Henrietta Reenex burlesque night. I was secretly watching. And I left my dance swinging class. Don't you mean swing dancing? No. And all you lost was your mustache wax? Nonetheless, it was a great loss. Let me How tell you about great loss. How about... Sit down, you limey marmoset. Do you see this spine? Yes. What if I told you it was made of a space age pipe cleaner because I lost my spine in a construction accident? But a spine is internal and mustache wax winks at you and melts your heart. Oh, let me tell you about loss, Captain G. Uh, did I mention? Not only did I lose my tin of mustache wax, I also lost my appetite. I'm not sure how much you know about Marmoset ecosystems. Oh, it, it was my minor. Oh, but Marmoset cult society is uncle-centric, and I had the best uncle ever, Uncle Pete Best. And one night after a gig in Hamburg, Uncle Pete Best just disappeared. I felt a great loss too, Captain Goodfellow. Of course you have. I, I'm not sure if you remember that. I am not only a World Street Luge quadrathlete, at one time I was ranked fourth in the world. Oh, uh, <laughs> Four. <clears throat> but I was, I was stripped of my title because of the poppy seeds on my bagel tested positive for a whole bunch of THC in my system. So I guess we've all experienced loss. We think you should experience a fresh loss. What does that mean? A loss of balance. <laughs> oh, I should have said that before we pushed you off out of the lighthouse. Do you think the fool will kill him? Who cares? I found his mustache wax. Oh, let's go smoke it. Car wash soap opera. Foaming rinse. I thought I'd find you here. What's that supposed to mean? It couldn't be any clearer if it was scrolling across a blimp.
blimps aren't on demand, Jack. Neither are good stalls at this car wash. The ones where the foaming brushes have a steady flow. Is that what this is about? Is that what what is about, Ashley? I got here first, Jack. Why don't you vacuum your car before you wash it? Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? And I just miscarried. <gasps> Was she mine? Why, hello, Nikki. May I help you wash your car? Uh, Victor? <laughs> what are you doing uh, here? Well, let me get behind you and help you apply the foaming wash. Oh, sure. Oh, that's right. Wide, sweeping motions. All right, move those hips. I'm sorry. I'm not making you uncomfortable, am I? Mmm, new car smell. Oh, I dreamed of the day when you would you would take me in the car wash and and then go to Hurricane Harbor with Charlemagne and the Big Bopper. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure what the that last part means. Uh, before we take this any further, do you have any allergies to hot wax or clear coating treatment? Would it change anything if it was your baby? Oh, I can never get an even rinse on the hood. Uh, of course it would, Ashley. If you use a more circular motion. Maybe if you had used a more circular motion when you were impregnating me. Impregnating you. Such poetry. You know, our lovemaking was so beautiful it would make the gods weep. Oh, don't flatter yourself, Jack. To me, you're nothing more than a sperm wand. My loins ache and yearn for you. I've never made a man yearn before. I'll just slide down your pants. Oh, careful, Victor. Someone will see us. Maybe I want somebody to see us. Maybe I want to jump on the roof of your vehicle and scream, I want you, Nikki! Um, uh, standing on the roof will probably smudge. Let's just say the other stains we make will require more quarters. Oh, Victor! <laughs> Nikki? Nikki, is that you? Who's that? Oh, uh, just a sperm wand. <laughs> monkey monkey film, film School. Congratulations on getting into Monkey Film School. I'm not Dr. Myers, and I'll be your instructor for this term. <laughs> Pepe, it's outbursts like that that'll get you kicked out last semester. <laughs> No, it was not an anti-silverback conspiracy. <coughs> we'll agree to disagree. Uh, miss? Me? I couldn't help noticing that you are not a monkey. Actually, I'm one sixteenth Howler Monkey, and I'm here on the scholarship. Upon completion of this class, you should be able to, one, Analyze the cinematic elements within a film from a monkey perspective. And what, a, what about from the mostly human part of monkey perspective? Two, evaluate visual storytelling in terms of plot, character, and theme, and... And, 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 and how these elements impact human chimp hybrids? <laughs> That's not a very tolerant attitude for a silverback. <laughs> Three, appraise how a story is told through cinematic structure. Miss, this course is primarily intended for a 100% monkey audience. This I will do what I can to highlight how it applies to the offspring of monkey loving. That's it! I'm dropping the class! Oh, ah. Perhaps you'd like to reserve judgment until after you see our first film. I like to begin each class with a film that I feel accurately depicts the monkey experience. Monkey policeman Jab Jab is visiting his strange wife Zim Zim and two daughters on Christmas Eve. He joins her at a holiday party in the headquarters of the gorilla owned business she works for. But the festivities are interrupted by a group of feces terrorists who take over the exclusive high rise and everyone in it. Ah! Is. is this just die hard with monkeys? Pepe, pull off her face! She asks too many questions! <laughs> Surgery, Surgery house. house! Does it look open? They're open 24 hours. I haven't been to a surgery house in years. I bet you haven't been up all night drinking in years, too. Well... Hello, Hans. We're Ottoman. 
Would you like to start with a little local anesthetic? Oh, well, that mixed with our alcohol. Oh, you'd be surprised. Two local anesthetics. And what kind of surgery looks good to you ladies? An easier question might be, what surgery doesn't look good? Yeah, double arm, double leg amputation. I was looking for something lighter than that. Um, Pardon me. I'll be back. Uh, I forgot who I was. I'll be back in a second to drop off your morphine drip, hon. Uh, that's good, but that's not what I'm asking about. Your appendix uh, reduction went well. That's where I'm confused. Isn't it common to remove the entire appendix? Oh, it is, but you specifically requested an appendix reduction. You said something about sometimes an appendix needs to be taught a lesson. How would that even work? Uh, specialized online classes. Fine. When you get a chance, can I have my bill and post-operative instructions? Uh, anything else? How the scattered, smothered, chunked, and covered anonoid removal. Let me finish up with these ladies, doll, and we can discuss. So what looks good, ladies? Well, my scoliosis has been acting up, so I think I'll go with the Grand Slam colonoscopy with a side of polyp removal. Aren't you a little young for that prestige, eh? Yes, but my colon has been feeling neglected. And I'm having trouble deciding. Uh, what are you considering? Uh, the ACL repair is is interesting, but I think I'm going to go with the, the uterus tuck. Oh, did you want to sign up a lopium tube tightening? Oh, that sounds fantastic! Uh, Sabra? That's Dr. Sabra? My stitches popped and I'm hemorrhaging. I guess somebody didn't read the don't pick it it sign. Be right with you. Call pop and no talk with flop type prep on table four. Uh, does she operate on us at our table? It's a booth, silly. Two for the first, first date. First date. Hey, idiots. I'm, I'm sorry. My, therapy, my therapist is helping me work through immediately belittling strangers. Oh, I'll start over. Hey, idiots! Damn it! Take three. First dates can be stressful, but you will find that using your manners engorges the genitalia. Damn it! First impressions. <laughs> Hi, I'm Martha. <laughs> what kind of stupid name is that? You must be doofus. Oh, must I? Did you just try to steal my wallet? Uh, did you mean to wear that outfit and have that haircut? Now, you bitch-faced idiots. Damn it. Let's see how Demonair makes a first impression. Good evening. You must be Starlabelle. I must say you're more lovely in person than you were on the phone. And that's saying a lot because your phone voice is more glorious than 50 harps. Oh, you must be Debonair. Even though... You're wearing an impeccably tailored tuxedo. I can still see your rocking biceps and sculpted abs. And how about those first date table manners? Phew, that wasn't hostile at all. And calm, God, and calm brained motherfuckers, damn it! Are you starting your chili? Uh, what else? Uh, how else am I gonna get cumin in my sinuses? You gonna finish that? I haven't started cool, eating give me. it yet. Ugh. <clears throat> and at Debonair's table. May I hold your chair for you? You may. Your food looks too hot. May I blow on it for you? Oh, that is so thoughtful and hella sexy. And finally, the potentially awkward goodnight kiss, Debonair. Ordinarily, I don't kiss on the first date. And I wouldn't dream of imposing on you in any way. But in your case, I'll make an exception. As you wish. <laughs> oh, that kiss was so beautiful. <laughs> and let's see how Doofus handles it. This is near my apartment. I'll just run inside and lock the door. <laughs> Are you forgetting something? I don't... Let's know. see what that tongue tastes like! No. Oh. Uh, chew! Dude, you sneeze chili on me. Uh, I guess I'll French your mail slot. Dude, ah, get ah, your ah. towel out of my apartment. The, the Life, life narrators, narrators waiting. waiting.
This hurts so bad. Nobody said cutting your thumb off was whiskers on kittens. What, what are you even talking about? I don't know. I'm freaked out. I, I, I've, I've never seen anyone I what, love. Wait, what did you just say? I'm holding open the door so my lady may enter the waiting room. I'm playfully curtis curt curtsying and secretly cupping your left nut. Ah, she's cupping his left nut. Did you say you loved me? I'm looking for a place to sit that is close to the good TV and the coffee. I'm following you, still cupping your left nut. I can't believe that there are more critical injuries than yours. You're avoiding my question. I'm asking these strangers to pardon me. Pardon me. I couldn't help noticing that your hand is wrapped in a blood-soaked blanket. I think I know what it is. I'm interjecting. Heavy period? <laughs> he cut off his thumb! Which was all it took to get Mildred to say she loved me. So, <laughs> wouldn't you be saying it back to me? I'm asking them if they would mind moving over so I can see the TV better. Would you mind? You thought this man was having a heavy period? I'm explaining that I'm not a doctor and changing the subject. How long have you been waiting? I'm asking. We've been dating off and on for about eight months, so I would have expected him to tell me he loved me months ago. I've been busy. I'm correcting her. No, stupid. How long have you been waiting to see a doctor, I ask? Hey, uh, you can't call the woman I love stupid. What did, oh, what did you just say? Miss, I'm asking, would you mind holding my coffee while I see if they will change the channel? We've seen this divorce course already. I I'm explaining. No, no, I'm not holding your coffee. What did you just say, Demon? I don't mean to be rude. I'm interjecting. I love but... you, Mildred. And that, that's not just me being lightheaded from the blood loss. Then why did you bring your lightheadedness up? I'm questioning. Well, I, I didn't even see you two check in. Yeah, the doctors won't see you if you don't check in and fill out all the... Uh. Oh, Darius, help! I'm walking over to her and addressing her as a child when I say, we're not here to see the doctor. I'm adding, we just come here for the free TV and coffee. Mildred, if I make it out of this alive... I'm turning up the TV volume because someone is being a little loud. Yes, yes, Darius. Will you marry me? Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm putting my hand on her shoulder and asking her, had you planned on getting engaged without a ring? Uh, co come on, Darius. They called your name. And I'm changing the channel. I would like a ring. I'm warning her loud if one of the trauma center nurses will stop saving lives for a moment to make some fresh coffee. <laughs> Darius! No! I'm musing. I mean, would it kill them to have some snacks around? <laughs> Danger magnets. magnets! Let's listen in on a potentially embarrassing encounter. I tell you, Goldilocks, I'm standing in line for lover boy tickets for the Everybody's Working for the Weekend Tour. I have no idea who Loverboy is, but this story sounds amazing. Go on. When a fat guy on a unicycle uh, rolls up oh, to me. Oh, wait a fashion stranger. Go on. And I start to kick the wheel right out from mm, under him. Gross. You didn't just fell into my blood orange old fashion. I want a restraining order. As a recently divorced and or widowed old fluck who has been too irresponsible to preserve your own teeth, you need all the help you can get when you're trying to wade back into the dating pool. And that's where denture magnets come in. Oh, tell me more. It's a simple, painful process <laughs> of drilling metal posts deep into your jaws, which allow your yellow, stinky, disgusting, fake teeth to stick to them through the magic of magnets. Sounds expensive. Damn right it's expensive, bitch mouth. Yeah, crap on my kids' inheritance. I want them. Three agonizing weeks later. <laughs> Thank you for meeting me here, Penelope. You're welcome. You, you look so much older than your picture. And... Uh, you know, the American flag in the background with only 45 stars, that should have really tipped me off. Do you mind putting this metal in your mouth? No, of course not. Oh, what's going on? My mouth is being pulled towards yours and I can't stop it! Thanks, Denture Magnets. Denture Magnets does not condone the use of our product to allow the old to smooch the young. In fact, 
I'm alerting the authorities. I have your dog. You wouldn't want anything to happen to Patches, would you? Did your magnets? I didn't see nothing. <laughs> that is how we end tonight. Threatening dogs. <laughs> yes, kind of like National Lampoon. <laughs> yes. Uh, this has been episode 76, Knock Off Fruity Pebbles. I am Richard Houghton, your host. Please give it up for our amazing cast, Kristen Keith. Yay! Rob Huntsmith. Special guest star, Cynthia Santiago! And Richard! Richard Houghton. Thank you for pronouncing it French. Is anybody working on anything cool? Wow, not all the same I mean, I know I'm not. Yeah, I'm going to be doing a film for SMU this summer. Cool. And they made a little prequel to the feature. It's a short film called The Whims of Father Bentley. And it's out now on, you can see it on YouTube. There's links to it on Facebook and on Instagram. If you look at the Book of Job film or the Book of Job movie. But just search for The Whims of Father Bentley. And I play. Father Bentley. Wow. Yeah. I wouldn't have guessed it. So I have I have whims. <laughs> I have whims that are whimsical that you can see on, yep. on your television. You get to your, see him with the, the little, you know, what do you call the? Uh, the collar. <clears throat> the priest collar. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I didn't know if there do was you ever a wear special it to name. Like, try to get out of things. <laughs> priest collar. Yes, actually I do. <laughs> and sometimes into things. Oh. What? Wait, 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 wait. I missed the call. Father, please. <laughs> I mean, that would sound kind of odd and bed right like oh father <laughs> <laughs> i don't know no but look for the whims of father bentley and i know they're trying to uh raise money for the book of job it is a student project so they could always use uh, any assistance that uh you might have so yeah. that's right. that's what i got more cool yes. anybody else <laughs> Just professionally auditioning. Awesome. You know. Oh, yeah. yes. That's just that's auditioning and yay, auditioning. Yay, yay. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I got a big bag of nothing, so I'm going to oh. ding the bell and it'll be over. Okay. Oh. Ding. ding. <laughs>